bitch. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on they feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We rearranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Press and be daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the sewer man yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen We never have technical difficulty here I don't know about other podcasters and what they do But listen, every time we come on, uh -huh. we come on perfectly We come on right the first time Everything goes right all the time. We never have technical difficulties because we're professionals, Please people. don't fire me. Hey, please. Listen, we're all flawed. And technology is always failing us and then always tricking us and then always doing something. So uh, thank you so much for your patience. This was, a, this was a test of the emergency broadcast system to see if your patience... <laughs> Is growing in Jesus Christ. Do I still huh? do I still have my four hundred one k bus? Um, you never had one, so <laughs> you're good. So, um, uh, uh, but no need to apologize, bro. That's just the nature of tech. Um, I love you guys so much. I want to shout out the dwellers. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your patience. That's what you just exercised. I appreciate your patience. I love you guys so much. I am so. I, I was just telling the team that I get so excited for Mondays, like like excited for Mondays. Like I would do this live every single day and give Breakfast Club a run for their money. <laughs> I'm like I'm not I'm not, not like in a competitive way. I just like I would be here every day Monday through Friday to do this cuz I just I literally just love it that much. So shout out to all of the dwellers that are in community that have pressed B that have taken this philosophy and made it a lifestyle. Uh I want to shout out all of my B-siders, everybody that has subscribed, whether you have done so annually or you've signed up for our monthly subscription. Thank you so much. Yes, let's, let's give them a hand. Go. Let's give them a hand. And because we do receipts around here, Woo. let's do receipts. Uh, where are these receipts at? Hector just sent them to me. All right. So here is where we stand as of today, right now. Right here, boss. That's your, that's your. Oh, booyah. Okay. You're helping me get off my phone. We got 16,477 <laughs> total downloads of the app. Uh -huh. Let's go. Woo. Total users, 16,700. Oh, 16, that is unbelievable. Active subscribers, 4606. 4,606 people are actively using this app. Let's go! Let's go! I love you guys so much. Thank you for pressing B. Literally to download this app. <laughs> do you know how hard that is to do? This is wild. So I love you guys and uh thank you for being a part of the B side. We have so much exciting content coming in uh 2024. I cannot even get into it because y'all would y'all wouldn't even be ready. So I'm not gonna even do y'all like that. When it when it drops, it's just gonna drop and then y'all gonna have to deal with it and it's gonna be all good. So anyway, um uh, what are we getting into today? I, I got so oh, a, oh, oh, oh 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 and, and the analytics. On listen, listen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, we need to today. Today <laughs> is Numbers Day. Like this might as well be the book of numbers. Amen. Uh, because um, numbers matter. Every number has a name, and every name has a soul. So when we talk about numbers. Um, we don't talk about them to like gloat or to be like, look how many. We we talk about it to be like, look how many people right. are being discipled, are being engaged, are jumping into community that are pressing B. Numbers matter, and, and you can see that all throughout Scripture. Um, and so I'm super excited uh, to share some of that with you uh, based on um, 
YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. I think I don't even know if we have YouTube numbers and iTunes numbers. I only saw Spotify numbers. I will pull them up. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I want to let everybody know that uh, Welcome to the Basement is now in pre-order. If you have not pre-ordered Welcome to the Basement, I need you to do that right now. <laughs> right this minute. We want this book to be in the hands of as many people as possible because for every time uh, this sells, we might get another soul to dwell. Bars! Woo! I'm going to say it again. Every time this book sells, we may potentially get another person to dwell. Come on now. To go ahead and press B. So I want this book on not the best sellers list. I want this book on the best dwellers list. Uh -huh. And so Welcome to the Basement is going to be uh, the guide to an upside down world of greatness. This is this is my baby right here. Um, it, it will come with a study guide as well, but it, it is down for pre-order. Now, there were some people that were concerned that if they pre-ordered today, that um, the money would be taken today. I just want you to know, if you pre-order today, they don't take the money today. They can only legally take the money when the book actually is officially released for sale, which is not until February the 27th. And so if you have like 30 bucks in your account, <laughs> if you feel like you're going to have $30 in your account on the 27th of February, would you do me a favor and would you pre-order the book now? If you don't believe you'll have $30 in your account on February 27th, do not pre-order this book. <laughs> I do not want you going into debt. I do not want you. I do not want your uh, banking account to be uh, uh, get hit with overdraft fees. Um, but if you feel like you're going to have um, thirty dollars in your account on February the twenty seventh, would you do do us a favor? Pre-order the book now. Now let me give you the math behind why we want you to pre-order the book. I am believing God for ten thousand. Come on pre-orders of this book not not a thousand ten thousand okay we listen listen and 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 i'm not asking for nothing lofty we had eight we, we had one thousand people fly to texas and sell out our event in eight days and the greyhound bus one dude got on the greyhound bus fam <laughs> what are we even talking about what are we even talking about so that that that's absolutely amazing and supernatural. I I I want I want 10,000 pre-orders of this book uh because it makes a huge statement to the book industry, to our publisher, um and to um uh retailers letting them know that that people are really taking this seriously. So um I know we have thousands of thousands of listeners and viewers and watchers. And uh, if this has been a blessing to you, we would ask you to just make this investment. If you if you have already pre-ordered, consider pre-ordering for a friend. Just one. If if each one reach one, if if one person just bought one for one other person, then we got that many more people reading and pressing B and having the philosophy in their hands, right? Like right. not having to be like, let me go back to episode one and try to figure out what Tim was talking about when he was when he had that vision. No, that's in the book. That when when you open this book, we 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 get you to press B before you even get into what's really going on. So um ooh, I'm so happy. So excited. Um can we make sure maybe I can do it myself. I think I can. Did I do that right? It looks great. Booyah. And Tim, just a quick update. I do have our YouTube analytics and Spotify. Whoa. Uh, we <laughs> we are about to get uh, apples on the way, but okay. here's this one in the meantime. Here's YouTube. Yikes. Okay. So, okay. Is that just this year or overall? This is lifetime. Okay. This is lifetime. Wow. <laughs> okay. So we have... <laughs> We have 34.7 million views. <laughs> it's just wild. 34.7 million views, 5.3 million watched hours. 298,000 point nine 
thousand subscribers. That that's that's wild. I hear Spotify. Spotify, um, six point two million plays all time. Uh, per episode, twenty seven thousand three hundred and thirty four. Our audience size, shout out, in the last seven days, 48,197. I need everybody in this audience to go buy this book. (laughs) We are guaranteed to be a number one best dweller if everybody who listens to the pod buys this book. Right. If if you're like, I listen to your pod so much, I already know what your book's going to say. Buy this book for somebody else. If you are going to have $30 in your account (laughs) on February 27th, I need you to buy this book. I need you to pre-order this book right now. Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, however you want to get down, okay? Walmart, it's going to be everywhere. And that way when we go on tour, we we Gucci, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, And we got some great stuff in store. I don't even want to get into uh, some of the surprises we have coming up. The first 90 days of of 2024 the first quarter of 2024 is gonna be like the year of the dwellers like we we about to we about to be out here like zombies like we about to be out here all right so spotify impressions 1.8 million in the last 30 days and uh the amount of followers that we have is 50,608 50,000 followers on spotify alone so first of all praise god Woo! i'm listen I don't take that for granted. That is that is Jesus Cristo. Gloria a Dios. And um, uh, speaking of which, listen, when I tell you I'm getting it in, Estudio Español uh, cada día. See, like every day. Yeah, see, um, Estudio Español cada día. Um, I get up in the morning. I don't know how to say that in Spanish yet. Um, but um, Leo... Is to read. See, si. leo uh, mi Santa Biblia um, in English y uh, in Espanol. Um, uh, I uh, leo in my mind. Como se dice in my mind? Miente. In mi mente. Leo in mi mente in English. Um, pero um, um, Leo, like, como se dice, out loud. <laughs> like, I read out loud, or I, I would just say I speak it. Um, yo, um, uh, yo, yo, uh, Leo, yo, Leo habla? Le, Leo, Leo, oh, uh, hablo? Leo hablo? Si, sí, gracias, gracias. Leo hablo, uh, in español. So, so, in mi mente, in mi mente, in inglés, y um, leo hablo in español. Sí. Sí, cada día. Cada día. Someone, ordered pre- someone pre-ordered three books already. Yay! Somebody, listen. Now you're getting obnoxious. Y'all trying to run up the score. Y'all trying to run up the score. Don't turn this into a competition. Right. Listen, I, 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 I am so I'm just so excited. Like I'm excited for I'm, I I believe 2024 is the year that God just does more. And I don't like rhyming. Like, you know how people like try to take every yeah. year and whatever it rhymes with. They try to, you know, 2023 is all about me. 2022, Lord, what you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you are a, you're a rapper, so I know it. But but um, but yeah, I'm I'm with you. Six one nine. Uh, 2024 is a year as a dwellers. I I really do feel like God's gonna do something. It's sixty three dollars for me to pre order the physical copy all the way in India. So I'm having to save for it right now. Hope to pre order next week. Uh, hijo, hijo, uh, hijo, hijo, Alexander. Um, um, uh, I'll buy your book. Hey, drop your email, Hiho. We'll hit you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'll buy your book. $63 to pre-order it. I, but can I pre-order it and make sure it gets to him? Can we, can we do that? We could also just buy, like, you know, order it here to the crib and then we send it to him. However we need to do it. We'll do, well, yeah. I will get you your book. In India? Come on. Are you kidding me? Oh, you, 
Uh, he can't do Cash App in India because Cash App is only in America. We, I, I want to get him the money. Uh, I just want to get him the money so he can get it. He hosts. See, when, when I read up. stuff like that, I'm like, let's get it popping. Look at this. Oh, dude. All right, all right, all right, homie. Okay, okay. I, I hear your heart, and I'm not gonna stop you. I, I could go. We could go back and forth. He said, "Nah, fam, I'll buy it. I want to bless you." <laughs> Yeah, he said, "I want to bless you guys in a in a little way." No, I I I, I respect that. Yeah. I, I really respect that, and I appreciate that. Um, and thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Vince said, "Amazon charged me already." Dang, Amazon's like <laughs> Amazon. Amazon's like Tim lied to you. We taking that money now, bro. I I I was told that they can't take it until, um. It actually comes out. So, uh, I, Jonathan, you are absolutely right. Heho is a real one. That is for exactly. sure. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> 619 respect. said Trapazon. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So, Amazon is, yeah, yeah. Lorinda wants to know is it a hold? Amazon won't charge till shipped. Um, Listen, anyway, if that was your last thirty dollars, please get that back. <laughs> like 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 uh uh but anyway, I love you guys and, and listen, we, we want this to be a best dweller. If this is a best dweller, people have to listen to us. A bestseller? A best dweller. A best dweller, that's what we're calling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. This, this, I'm trying to be on the New York Times best dwellers Come list. Come on now. That's what we're trying to do. Like we uh, listen, th this ain't about like no ego thing or like, I, cause I'm not an author. God just tells me when to write a book and I'll write a book. And so, um, that's what that is. And, uh, I'm so appreciative for all of you all's love and support. Uh, Do you so have it on audio, Tim, I, I start recording the audio book tomorrow. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I start recording the audio book tomorrow. So, um, we, when, when it's done, uh, we're going to have, uh, we got some, I don't even, I can't give it to you. I can't give it to you all. I can't give it to you all. But yeah, I'm reading it in my own voice because uh, I do the pod in my voice. I, I couldn't have anybody else voice the audio book. That would just be weird. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I'll do the read myself and uh, that's what we'll do. Somebody just uh, said that I pre-ordered the Audible version. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Cindy bought the book and the audio. I love you so much. Yes, we'll do the audio in Spanish. How could we not? I can't be practicing, practico, uh, practicando. I am practicing, yep. mm -hmm. practicando español. Yep. Y um, uh, libro audio. I don't know. Like audio book. Libro in, in, in audio, si. Sí. Libro in audio, um, in español, si. Sí. So, if, um, if someone, if you did have to hire someone of any caliber, any human in the world, who would be in place to read the book? Read the book for me in Spanish? No, 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 in English. Someone said Morgan Freeman. I was, one, <laughs> I was, I was wondering who you thought you would like to have. <laughs> I don't know nobody. Mm. Nobody. Mm. I'm 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 reading this book. God gave it to me. I'm reading it. It's good. <laughs> like, I don't have no dream person to read for me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I love Morgan Freeman's book, but he can't do this one. Uh, uh, no. Nah, Denzel couldn't read it because I don't think I say I guarantee it. <laughs> uh, I don't think I write that in the book, and I don't think I don't think Denzel takes any script that doesn't have the words. I guarantee it in it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, uh, that that's great. Okay, so uh, we've talked about we've talked about all the. Oh, do we have iTunes stuff? So Sammy just hit us up. Uh huh. And oh, did he? Because remember the uh, it had taken over uh, the original company is called Anchor that we were streaming everything through. Uh huh. And it Spotify took it over. Oh, Spotify so, took over. Ooh. So what we're gathering right now, it's still actually not even clear. If you've switched to Spotify for podcasters, um, uh, you may see slight variations in your podcast plays or ad impressions. This can happen for a few different reasons. And it goes on and so forth to say it's basically mixed up. 
which I feel like is not the case because I'm seeing two different ratings when I go between Apple yep. and Spotify. Yep. And we definitely have more people listening on Apple. Yep. So I'm still digging into it. No worries. Let, let me get some stats that I did find out yeah. uh, from the podcast side that is really, really dope. Okay, so 64% joined us for the first time this year. Welcome. That's awesome. Uh, our top fans listen 5.3 more times than any of our other listeners. Uh, our podcast is number one for 21,436 fans. That's ridiculous. If we're number one, buy the book. <laughs> um, uh, we, we are a top five podcast for 49,393 fans. Let's Listen, I'm hyped about these numbers, y'all. Let's go! Um, let's see. We're a top 10 podcast for 60,704 fans. Um, we grew on this. This is just audio. We grew 332% this year. Our followers growth was 436%. Our streams went up by 787%. Lord have mercy. Holy. Our listeners went up by 398%. We charted a total of 23 weeks, so we're in the top 20% of all podcasters. Come on, bro. We hit we we charted in four countries and peaked at number 3. Um that's just unbelievable. Our podcast rating is 4.9 out of 5. Wow. Lord have mercy on my soul. That's insane. Yeah, that is. That is kind of insane. I would say so. Fifty-three percent. Uh, fifty-three percent of our podcasts are shared, uh, by text, while another twenty-five percent are shared by direct link. So, that's wild. It's not even shared through social media as much as it's shared directly from. The pod itself, like people are listening, going snap. Gen boom. That's genuine conviction right there. That, that's 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 wild. <laughs> genuine conviction. That's wild. Okay, and then um, I thought this was really really cool. Um, our most we have the the most new listeners, United States, no duh. But are y'all ready for the next four? If if we shout out your country, you got to go ham real quick. Like like this is this is really really cool. Okay. All right, rounding up our top five. We know United States is number one, but are you ready for the next four countries? The next four countries are United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. Once again, rounding up the top five countries for the basement and our dwellers, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you this. I'm saying this now, but don't hold me to an actual date. Basement's coming to UK, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. In that order. Guaranteed. Let's go! Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You bringing me something, baby? Yeah, you're not even done. Little Instagram hitter. The last 90 days. Shishama. <laughs> All right, Instagram last 90 days, we reached 111% more accounts. Our total reach was 11.3 million. Accounts engaged was 1.2 million. Total followers, 631,000. Lord, okay. Praise Jesus. All right, that's, that's wild, fam. I just wanted to... That's just, that's just crazy. Okay. All right. Well, okay. The, 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 the book of numbers is done. <laughs> oh, really? In the chat. Okay, great. Yeah, if you if you want to get a feel for um, what how, how the read-through of Welcome to the Basement is going to be, you said the first chapter is free? Yeah. Okay, the first chapter is free. Who knew? I didn't even know. For some of y'all that can't wait, you can read through the first chapter. 
Um, and so, um, man, that's just that's just really dope. That's just really dope. Okay, I'm done with numbers. The dweller community is crazy. Lastly, lastly. Aha. Them shoes are on for display. These B-side, these B-side sneakers. Sizes six and nine. Six in uh, ladies, nine in gents, which is my size. I mean, I could justify keeping these. <laughs> I mean, I could justify keeping it. Very these. cute. They match my outfit currently. I could justify <laughs> keeping these. I really could. Um, all right, we're ready to ship these. Now, remember what we told you the prerequisite was? You have to, you have to be a B-sider because these say B-side. All right? When we did press B, that, <laughs> that's everybody that, would, that, that considers themselves a dweller. But I can't have you walking around with B-size sneaks and you don't have a B-size subscription. <laughs> like, that's kind of that's besides the point. Uh, I know that was punny, but I put it out there. And y'all, I mean, crickets. Y'all yeah, didn't even. <laughs> y'all just, like, Hooli kept working. Hector kept scrolling. My son didn't even give me eye contact. Trey was in the corner like, I don't, I don't even see you. I just, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Like, I, I don't even... Have no idea. I didn't know it was gonna be was a little that bad of a pun. It was a little, um, was a little sad. Man, he's in his dad era. Man, yeah. I thought it was a bigger pun than that. <laughs> please, please. Shout out pun. to Terror Squad. Shout out um. To anyway, um. Hey, there it is. Booyah. Uh huh. Booyah. Y'all see it? Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> so we got this in a men's size nine, and we got this in uh, a lady size six, and we're ready to ship these. So, um. I don't know how you verified. In the Shed Hill Discord chat. Okay. Send them if you're six or nine. Okay, got you. Don't bombard it if you have six or nine. Okay, got you. Yeah, please. Do not bombard it. In the Chateau Discord chat, um, if you if you have a B side subscription and um you have the uh well, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. My brain's farting. Okay, B side subscription you gotta have. Go to the Chateau Discord chat. Put in if you are a six or a nine solamente. See? Solamente. Don't go in there with uh I'm a size seven and a half. Why doesn't Jesus love me? <laughs> Bruh, sis, not today. I'm so sorry. If you are a six or a nine, okay? Sieta. Siete y nueva, uh, nueve, nueva is es, es, si, sí, is new, si, sí, si, sí. um, um, nueve, nueve y, uh, nueve o siete, uh, perdón, es seis, no seis, seis, uh, 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 six, right? Seis, 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 oh, seis, 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 oh, siete, seven, yeah, my bad, um, siete, no, no, seis, <laughs> Seis o nue nueve. Seis o nueve en, uh, uh, ese zapatos es, um, uh, como se dice, yours. Like, y tuyo? Like, 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 these are yours. See, see what she said. Uh, my brain. I do. I do my Spanish in the morning and listen. I'm going to Colombia for a whole month. My family vacation next next year is in Colombia for a whole month. I'm getting full immersion. I will be in Medellin. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Ooh, estupendo. Somebody already went to the Discord chat with their disobedient behind and put I'm a size 12, bro. You are like. Literally three sizes away from even God moving and troubling the water in your direction. What level? How could you be in here and hear what we just said and be like, uh huh, uh huh, amen? I'm a size 12. How did you do just for that? that you're not getting the shoes? Ooh, okay. Nathan Whoa. has spoken. Whoa. E. coli virus. <laughs> All right. Praise him. Praise him in the new day. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> 
Listen, we just having fun. I love you guys so much and um grateful to be here with you. All right. We always do Q&A. This is what this day is all about and um what what's going on with everybody? Can I can I say something before we get into Q&A? I was at a Pillar Church yesterday. And um if you live anywhere near Arizona, um I need you to check out Pillar Church. Visit one time. If you don't like it, you don't have to go back. Uh, but just visit the church. Uh, that's where uh, Preston, my twin brother, he's the lead pastor at the church. I'm there um, between, between 6 and 12 times a year. And um, uh, we've had so many dwellers who were kind of in between churches or had been church hurt decide to give Pillar a try, and, and many of them, are still there. And so uh, if you're in that Phoenix Scottsdale area and um, you're not married to like driving to a church that's around the corner, because it might be a little commute for you. But on Sundays, is the traffic ever going to be that bad? No. They have a Saturday service and they have two Sunday mornings. And um, I just I just I just ask that you would give it a try. The reason why I bring it up is that I was there yesterday and I did one of my favorite messages that God has ever given me on discipleship. It's a message called Disciples Make Decisions. And um, it's out of uh, John chapter number six. I read 49 verses, which is kind of obnoxious to do. Uh, but I'm in church. And if you don't want to read the Bible in church, why are you even here? It's like going to a restaurant and the chef apologizing for cooking food. Like, hey, I'm going to cook your food. What are you talking about? That's what you do here. Cook. So, um um, I read 49 verses, verses 22 through, I think, 71, taught the message. But the whole message is around discipleship, and we are disciple makers. That's actually the commandment that we were given by Jesus. We were given the command to go make disciples. We were not sent to go make church members. We were not sent to go make followers of our social media accounts. We were called to make disciples. That's what we're supposed to be doing is making disciples. And so um, uh, the message that he gave me, disciples, makes de disciples Make Decisions, is centered around the fact that um, making a decision for Jesus is not a one-time thing. A lot of people think, I made a decision to follow Jesus, and I never have to make that decision again. Quite the contrary. How many people that do we know that made a decision for Jesus in one season of their life, but in another season of their life, they walked away from that decision. They've literally turned their back on the Lord. They've gone back to a previous lifestyle. Some, some of them have gone into a worse lifestyle. They made a different decision than the decision that they previously made because they did not, they, they did not consider or never considered that the decision is not one time, it's every single day. For the last 27, almost 28 years that I've been a believer in Jesus Christ, I have had to make the decision to follow Jesus over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Not once, not twice. I've, I had to make that decision and remake that decision and remake that decision over and over and over and over and over again. Because um, when the ebbs and flows of life come, when you come off those mountaintop experiences and you got to walk through a valley, that's when you really know if you're a disciple or not. You do not know if you're a disciple when you are eating free lunch and having miracles uh, happen all around you every single day. You know you're a disciple of Jesus when, when the free lunches stop and you're in the middle of a storm mm. and when those miracles stop and you have to deal with the sickness. Mm. When those miracles stop and there is a death and there is no resurrection. When those miracles stop and there is no healing for this disease, that's how you know if you're a disciple or not. You don't find that out really on the good days. You find that out on those bad days. Mm. You find that, the, that out on those rough days. And so um, I just want to remind everybody that message burns on the inside of me. Um, if, I, if, if, if I could only preach one message for the rest of my life, outside of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the fact that he was born of a virgin, that he lived and did miracles, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose again on the third day with all power in his hand, and that he ascended back to the right hand of the Father, daily making intercession for us, outside of the, the gospel message, which is glorious and all by itself. 
Uh, if I had one more pre- message to preach, it'd probably be that one. Mm. And if I preach it every day for the rest of my life, it wouldn't be enough. Mm. Because we all need the reminder that to be a disciple of Jesus is an everyday decision. You will literally be confronted with options every single day that are going to make you have to make that decision over and over and over again. A lot of people think the same thing about marriage. They actually think that the wedding vows is something that they give once and that they don't have to they don't have to remind themselves of those again or even recommit themselves to those again. Like, nah, like the, you got to make a decision to come home every single day. You have to make a decision to be faithful every single day. So I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Unless you want to. (laughs) Because then you can. Say it again, baby. Not an ideal choice. Right? Not an ideal choice, but a choice nevertheless. Because if you don't have that choice, then he's a dictator. And he's not a dictator. He gives us free will to make a decision. So you can be a disciple. Uh Uh-oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Oh, snap. You can be a disciple that's following close to your rabbi your Savior and your Lord, or you can be a disciple that's following from a distance. And I'm going to tell you, if you're following at a distance, you can't hear his voice. Although you may see his feet and you may see where he is, you can't hear his voice unless you're up close. And I see a lot of people creating distance between themselves and Jesus. Not that they're not still following, but they're following at a distance. And let me tell you what's in between them and Jesus. Ego, Mm. narcissism, Mm. lust, Mm. carnality, insecurity, low self-esteem, bitterness, comparison, envy, jealousy, sexual perversion. All of this creates distance between you and Jesus. And so to close that gap, you got to start denouncing, renouncing, repenting of all this stuff that's in between you and him so that you have close proximity to your rabbi. That's good. You can't be covered in the dust of your rabbi if you got a crowd in between you and him. How many people were touching Jesus on the day he was going to Jairus' house, yet the woman with the issue of blood is the only one Mm. who touched him significantly? You can be pressed up against Jesus and not touching him. Mm. You could have not missed a church service in the last nine years and still not touched him. Because you think being around him is being with him. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, they just need to figure out what the difference between both of those is, huh? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So so I'm 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 really I'm really hoping that um first of all some of y'all just need to go watch that message. Disciples make decisions at Pillar Church. And if you live in that Phoenix area, Phoenix Scottsdale area, just go to the church. Go to the church. One time. You ain't you ain't gotta go back. But don't say ain't no churches that want to live right and every church is judgmental and I don't I'm I'm really just by myself right now. God is meeting me at my house. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. You need to be in community. Let, and let me tell you, let me let, mm, hmm. uh-huh. I'm on I'm on one today. I'm gonna just yeah. keep on going with this. All right, so um there's a lot of you spiritually mature believers. And you're like, I don't go to church. I watch online, but I have my personal relationship with God. Um, I can feed myself. Yay, you. And you still need community. Yep. I know you're spiritually mature. Um, here's what I need you to say. If you're, here's what I need you to stop saying. If you're spiritually mature, I don't just, I just don't get fed there. I don't get fed here. 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 I'm just trying to say it in as many different var- variations as I can. I don't get fed here. I don't get fed here. I don't get fed here. He just doesn't feed me. I don't get fed here. That's because you're spiritually mature. Guess what? 
My kids don't get fed by me. They can feed themselves at this point. When they was kid, when they was babies, I put them in a little chair. They were so cute, and I mixed up their little food. And I put it on a spoon. I did the little airplane year on year on year on year on year, and I put it in my. Nathan is fifteen years old. How many times have I fed you? Uh, never. Since in this age, because I, I cook my own food. Yeah, you cook your own food, right? Own food. Because you are of age and you are mature enough that you can prepare your own meal. Right. So all of you spiritually mature people that have devotion time, and you, why are you complaining about that your pastor don't feed you? You can feed yourself, but you still need community. You still need to be around a body of believers. I'm not asking you to go in there and volunteer to be on the parking lot team, da 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 da, da but don't just wind up being a, a splinter cell. And you're just ha- at home every weekend, and you're like, "Yeah, I just don't like the, I just don't like the, the institutionalized church. Mm. I'm going on a fast from church. Where they, where they do that at? <laughs> Stop playing. Oh, Lord have mercy. Wow. Uh, been been riding with the basement since day one, and if it wasn't for all the guests you had, the crew and the dwellers' questions, I probably wouldn't." I probably wouldn't been here right now. Dang. This open vulnerability has led to my wife and I doing our first marriage group this semester. George, I'm so proud of you. Dang, that's a beautiful thing. He thank didn't you. have to give us 100 bucks just to say that. No, no. that's Thank you for saying that, baby, because that's exactly how I feel. But it's very, very kind, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I, all, all you I don't get fed here people, stop, stop that. You feed yourself, and you still need to go. Yes. Some of y'all are great cooks, and you still order out sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you don't even feed yourself all the time. Stop playing. <laughs> That's all I want. Anyway, we trying to raise disciples up in here. We Don't come over here if you don't want to be disciple. That's like the bottom line. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you ain't ready to eat his flesh and drink his blood and crucify your flesh, like this, this ain't the. It's a full course meal. It's a full course meal over here. The Savior is ready. For all people that want to go deeper with him, I'm I'm about making disciples, not church members. I'm about making believers in Jesus, not Christians. Come on. And it's no knock on us considering ourselves Christians or using that name, but there's so much loaded weight with that word Christian in this country mm. that I'm like, I don't even I don't I, I don't even refer to myself as a Christian in this country because it, because it comes with so much baggage. Anytime somebody asks me, my what oh what is your faith? I'm a believer in Jesus. Mm-hmm. I want to make that clear because you say Christian and there's just too many. You got some new age Christians out here burning sage and 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 rubbing chakra stones and and trying to get their chi right. And I'm like you 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 just got you just got spiritual soup. <laughs> you you got like four cut up carrots. Uh, from from uh, <laughs> from from some Harry Krishnas, and you got some crushed up celery in your soup from uh, Islam, and then you got some, you got like four wi- wise quotes from Buddha. Uh, uh, you got some onions chopped up by Buddha in your soup. You doing too much. It's that all inclusive with this generation. Yeah, you know what I mean. I ain't trying to get all that. Willie Clay said, "What's his name though?" That's what I'm talking about, Willie. I'm like, if you can't say Yeshua. Is Messiah, if that's not what you can say, if you're just talking about, yeah, my my faith runs deep. <laughs> that's how that's how them politicians get down. You know what I mean? I'm a man of faith. With who, my though? faith runs deep. To who? To who? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Your Trump? faith run, your faith runs deep in yourself. Who who does your faith run deep in? Oh, and baby, that's my 15 year old talking right now. But how many how many believers put their faith in Trump? TrumpProphecies.com. Y'all joker try y'all jokers actually tried to say that this dude was like sent from the Lord. A savior. A savior. I, I don't mind you saying somebody's being used by God, because God used a donkey. And a donkey <laughs> don't even have a soul. So God can use anybody. I don't have no problem with that. But when you started to when y'all started walking around talking about <laughs> he was a savior and that God was using him to save a nation. Whoa. A nation that came over here and murdered people? That nation? Whoa, whoa. Your memory that short? Your history Your history books have been that whitewashed? Ah. That y'all forgot the, the origins of this country? 
E. coli. There, we're not called protestants for nothing. We protested a king, rebelled against that king, came over to this country, fought them, and then killed them. So what is we doing? What are you talking about? This country is founded on biblical principles and is, it is. It would be intellectually dishonest to say that this country is not founded on biblical principles. It would also be intellectually dishonest to say that the founding fathers, all of them, and or even the majority of them, were spirit-filled believers in Jesus Christ. Because if so, they couldn't have had slaves. Mm. Whoa. Oh, he's setting up. He's setting up. Oh, another mic fell. <laughs> I'm going to talk slow. I'm going to talk real slow over here. I'm going to talk real slow right through here. If the majority of the founding fathers were spirit-filled believers, there could not have been slaves. 100%. Because the Holy Spirit would have convicted you. The first time you, the first time you had a, you, you cast a lustful look. The first time you, you thought about dehumanizing an image bearer of God. Wow. The Holy Spirit would have convicted you. So you weren't spirit filled. And then to manipulate scripture, to try to get slaves to obey you. Come on now. Come on now. Let's do it. Come on now. I mean, if you I mean if, if that's if that's if that's where you want to go in your head as it relates to this country, and I love this country. Please don't get it twisted. I love this country. I'm glad I was born in this country. I'm glad my passport is blue. <laughs> I really am. And I am not ignorant to the devices of the enemy and how he tries to play us into not understanding the context of our own. Because, listen, if you cannot acknowledge the sins of your fathers and forefathers, if you are not knowledgeable of them, you are bound to repeat them. Whoa. I told I told um, some friends of mine last week. As a real, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many of my white friends um, always ask me, "What what, what do y'all? Uh, what, what how do you how do you do diversity? I want to be more diverse." And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> "You're." This is a predominantly Caucasian country. Right. You figure it out. Right. <laughs> Why are you asking the minority Bruh. how the majority should be trying to include the minority? Why should we have to be coming up with that? But here's the truth of the matter. I believe that we would have had a more effectual change in this country with Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech if he would have wrote it and handed it to Billy Graham and had him read it. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm going to let it marinate. Yeah, let that marinate. I'm going to move around. I'm going to let it marinate, and here's why I'm going to let it marinate. Because whenever you have a majority that is in power, you need somebody from that majority to speak to that power. Mm. You do not ask the minority to speak that that has been disempowered. You do not ask them to speak on behalf of the disempowered to tell those in power to change. Mm. You need somebody, somebody within that power tr structure to look right in the eyes of those in that power structure and say, we have to stop this. Not, you have to stop that. Right, right. I'll never forget before he died, Mar Marcus Lamb, God rest his soul. Marcus Lamb said, I want to be, be a part of the solution. What can I do as a white man? I said, you need to be a white mirror to your community. I said, when I tell you the plight of what African-Americans have gone through in this country or people of color have gone through in this country, 
I need you as a white man when you're on the golf course to tell your other white friends, you cannot use this language. You cannot think this way. Here is the right perspective you should have about people of color. Here is the right perspective you should have about uh, those that are in um, uh, communities that have been affected by um, uh, systems that perpetuate depowering and empowering certain groups. So I said, um, uh, if you're on the golf course and one of your uh, white friends uh, decides to use the word nigger with a hard R, wow. you as a white man needs to look that white man in the face and say, you can't use that word anymore or we can't be friends. Right. That will be more effective in that exchange than setting up a meeting and asking me right. to come ask... <laughs> <laughs> to come tell the white man, here's why you shouldn't be using nigger with a hard R. <laughs> That's not the way it should be done. Conversely, just be before y'all start getting a little too sensitive, because I know fragility is real, not just white, black fragility, all kind of fragility. Uh, uh, but I will also say conversely that black people need to speak to black people about the uh, perpetuations that we have in our community as well, as well as Hispanics, as well as Asians. We need to be responsible for our own communities and be able to go back and go, hey, bro, you can't, you got to stop talking about this like this. You're, you're, you're disrupting your, your, your own community by doing that. Wow. And if we're afraid to speak to our own, we're too busy trying to correct somebody else's behavior, you won't even correct your own. Woo. So yes, I don't like I don't like cops killing people of color. It is even more triggering when it's, when it's a, a white person with power who is racist, because not all white people are racist, please know that. But if a white person is racist and has power, that's one of the scariest beings on the planet Earth, right? If they kill a person of color, I should be outraged. When a black dude kills another black dude, if I don't have the same outrage, the hell am I even talking about? Right. If that doesn't bother you and you don't want to do something about that, why, what? stop. Then, then just hush. If you ain't ready to go ride on that, which is way more within your reach than the other, wow. let me tell you what would be absolutely outrageous if the murder rate within the black community went down so drastically that when a white cop killed a black person, the whole world would be outraged because they would be like, they stopped that within their own community and y'all still doing this? That's when it would get loud. But you can't be over here having a homicide almost every other night in Chicago, right. in L.A., in Gary, Indiana, in Miami, Florida, black on black, Hispanic on Hispanic, because you wind up killing somebody that you're in proximity to, bottom line, okay? Whites kill more whites, blacks kill more blacks, Hispanics kill more Hispanics, why? Because these, the, these are the people I'm in community with, right. right? Ain't nobody riding across town on a daily basis going, can't wait to kill somebody outside my race just for the hell of it. That's not going on. That's not going on. And when you get out of groupthink and you turn all of these channels off and you don't let the algorithm feed you your own little slanted view of the world, whether it's through Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC, um, uh, Facebook or whatever, when you get all out of that and you just just step back, just step back as a believer, fam. Just look at your own world. Right. Look at the your world around you and go, what's really, what's really going on? What do I actually see? Not what y'all keep reporting. What do I actually see? Well, what I actually see is that there are still racist systems that exist in the world. I rub up against them occasionally. But they do not hinder me. They never hinder me, right? So to 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 to, to it would be it would be intellectually dishonest to say that there is no racism in, in in the United States of America. That would be 
that would be asinine to say, right? Number one. Number two, it would also it would also be uh, intellectually dishonest to say that those racist systems have an impact on my life. I can't speak for all black people, but speaking for myself, I can't say that those racist systems impact my life. Are there racist systems? Abs- absolutely correct. There, there are. Is there systemic racism? Absolutely there is. Am I currently rubbing up against it in my field? No, I am not. Does it exist? Yes, it does. <laughs> Two things can be true. So you don't have to deny one thing to accept one thing or accept one thing and deny one thing. A whole bunch of stuff can be true. And at the end of the day, let's bring it back to this. Let's go to the book, shall we? I feel this thing because some people need to. We about to go into an election year next year, too. I'm trying to keep y'all from being triggered off stuff that don't matter. Okay, so um, Ephesians chapter number two, starting at the 14th verse. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with his commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now, all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. The only separation Jesus has, I'm I'm sorry, the only separation God has ever made in the earth. He's only made two separations on the whole earth. Ready for him? Yes. He separated Adam from, he, he separated Eve from Adam. And he separated Abram from the nations. Those are the only two separations God has ever made in the entire history of humanity. He separated Eve from Adam, and he separated Abram from the nations. Why did he separate Eve from Adam? So that he could bring them back together, and they could be one. Why did he ultimately separate Abram from the nations? So he could bring them back together through his son's broken body on the cross. Wow. So the only separation that God has ever seen and ever acknowledged is the separation between a man and a woman. The distinct difference, because he made both of them, made and formed both of them. Then, the separation he made from Jew and Gentile. So every other division that, that has been created, that's been created by Satan. Racism, created by Satan. Feminism, Satan. Chauvinism, Satan. Fascism, Satan. Classism, Satan. Racism. All the isms? Every other division that's ever been made has been given to us special delivery by Satan himself. There's a spirit of division, and it has endless categories. But he loves to divide. The Azusa Street revivals, uh, uh, going back to the early 1900s, those were, God was doing some amazing things through William Seymour and black, white, Hispanic, and all that kind of stuff. You know what happened as soon as those revivals were over? Black people went one way, white people went another way. Mm. The church could have been the biggest beacon of light to racial reconciliation that this world had ever seen seen, uh, during the Azusa Street revivals, but they allowed the system that was over America at the time to literally inform how they were going to do church. So MLK says that that Sunday morning is the most segregated hour on earth. Do you think it's just between black and white people? It's between black and black people too. White and white, white people too. Hispanic people too. Asian people too. There's division within division within division within division. Think about all the different denominations. Think about all the different theological distinctives. And Christ is saying, I made a distinction between Jew and Gentile 
And through my broken body on the cross, I reunited the two and made them a new group of people, the church. But we still can't get there because we still mad about the way somebody said this and the way somebody said that. Yet, if you say Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, it's like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, amen, brother. But <laughs> you're Baptist. That's the time where they don't use and. Yeah. It is a but. It's a but. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know you believe in Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, but you're Jesus only. Right. But you're Trinitarian. Trinitarian. But you teach about the tithe. But you don't teach about the tithe. <laughs> but you worship on Sundays. But you worship on Saturdays. But, 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 but. I've never seen so many big booties out here. <laughs> All these big butts. That just keep perpetuating division when Christ wants us to be unified and he's made it so simple. But we can't do it because we love our party. Oh, we love our opinions. We've made idols out of our opinions. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. How we got this much beef in the body of Christ when, when, when Scripture says right here, Christ himself has brought peace to, peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. The wall of hostility has been separated by Jesus' broken body. How did you put it back up? Mm. Oh, So you just like being pissed off? <laughs> you just like being mad at your brother and sister in Christ? Good Lord. <laughs> he ended the system of law. With his commandments and regulations, he made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. So if you can't see yourself as one new person, Jews and Gentiles, maybe you're not in Jesus. Maybe you are not in Christ. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. Our hostility towards each other was put to death, yet we still mad. We still hostile with each other. It's just wild, fam. It's just wild. So. Um, we do have some uh, audio submissions uh, later on whenever you're ready. Some people send in some voice messages for Q and A. Yeah. So listen, this thing, this thing is just yeah. in my belly right now, though. Keep going, brother. I just, I, I mean, man, I'm for unity, man. I'm for unity, y'all. Y'all, y'all out here mad about stuff, making reaction videos about people you don't like. I mean, good lord, have mercy on my soul. Like, you don't even know these people. And you feel like is that you've been deputized to tell your little audience who to watch out for? Well, well I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the, there's 332 million people yeah. in the world. Uh -huh. So, so, oh, oh. being Holy Ghost Junior has to be exhausting. Like go find go find out if everybody living right in your own church. Mm -hmm. Before you start talking about somebody else's. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's the only thing. Okay. Y'all be thinking I'm becoming a y'all think I'm just ranting. I'm not gonna pick me, pick me. La Jesus. Me no queer. All right. Here we go. First, first Corinthians chapter number five. I can hardly believe the report about the sexual immorality going on among you. Something that even pagans don't do. This is Paul talking to the Corinthian church, which is the most sexually off the hook church in the New Testament. Right. They are off the chain. And Paul says there's somebody at the church of Corinth <laughs> that's involved in some sexual immorality that even the pagans don't involve themselves they with. They don't even mess with that. They don't even mess with that, right? That's how thrilled y'all are. I am told that a man in your church is living in sin with his stepmother. Oh. Whoa. Oh. 
There's a dude in the Corinthian church that Paul participates in, and this dude is sleeping with his dad's wife. Okay, not his biological mom, but his stepmother. Wow. Some of y'all watch that kind of porn. Whoa. Mm. It's among the highest rated. Step stepmom, stepsister. Yep. It's, one, it's among the highest rated on, on uh Pornhub. I got stats. Uh you are so proud of yourselves, but you should be more but you should be in mourning, but you should be mourning in sorrow and shame. And you should remove this man from your fellowship. Uh oh. <laughs> Where should you remove this man from? Your fellowship. Oh. Not you should stop following his account. Whoa. Paul ain't talking about no dude way across town <laughs> in a church that he doesn't have any relational equity with. <laughs> Paul is talking about a church he planted. And he got wind that somebody in the church that he planted with the people he installed is off the chain. Again, you can't correct what you don't know, but once you do know, you're responsible. Even though I'm not with you in person, I am with you in spirit. Mm -hmm. And as though I were there, I have already passed judgment on this man in the name of the Lord Jesus. You must call a meeting of the church. I will be present with you in spirit. And so with the power of your Lord and so with the power of our Lord Jesus. Then you must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed. And he himself will be saved on the day the Lord returns as communication is biblical. Excommunication from a body of believers is absolutely bi biblical wow. because once that person can no longer feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, they must feel the conviction of the community that they're a part of. Right. And if they cannot feel their disconnect disconnection from God, they need to feel the disconnection from the body of believers that they belong to. So Paul says, kick them out. Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch Whoa. of dough? What he's saying is, oh, let me finish, uh, get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which, was, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate this festival, not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but with the new bread of sincerity and truth. So let me let this marinate real quick. What Paul is saying is, if y'all don't correct this behavior, you're going to see more of it. Wow. If you let this go unattended and unaddressed, now that it's public knowledge that this dude is boning his stepmom, if y'all don't do something about it, it's about to get worse. Yeah. Because if you don't correct it with this individual... Others will feel like they have the green light to do it as well. So once you find out about it, you got to nip it in the bud. Because sometimes the next person was just about to send the next DM, oh. but they stop because they realize, oh, dude, just got canned. It might be, ne be, might be me next. Now, this is, this is, when I read this part, oh, my goodness, this about to, oh, this about to shut the church down. Not the whole church, just them Holy Ghost Junior people <laughs> that feel like their job is to run outside and tell the whole world that they're sinning, which is the most no-duh no statement you could ever give the world. <laughs> they were born in sin. <laughs> when I wrote to you before, I told, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin or are greedy, or cheat people, or worship idols. You would have to leave this whole world to avoid people like that. <laughs> I meant, he's clarifying himself, because obviously some people were literally were trying to tell sinners, why are you sinning? And he's like, dude, I wasn't talking about unbelievers that are involved in sexual sin, or that are cheaters, or greedy, or whatever. He was like, you'd have to avoid the whole world to get rid of, to, 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 it, to avoid people like that. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer Ooh. yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worships idol or is abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. Eesh. Let me, let me, let me cook. I have declined preaching engagements based on who was on the roster. 
because of what I personally knew about not about one individual's life, but like the host and more individuals. Right. And once I saw that that it like this was like a tribe, <laughs> I didn't want to be associated with it. Yep. And I got biblical precedent for that. Don't even eat with such people. Come on. I don't hang with people that I know are openly in sin but call themselves believers. Come on. I will hang with an unbeliever all day that smokes weed. Boom. I absolutely will. I got homies in Cali right now. They have never confessed Jesus is Lord. And when I go back home, if it's for a funeral, whatever, guess what? They're going to roll up a blunt. Yep. I'm not going to be around for the contact high. But those are my niggas for life. Mm. And I'm a light shining into darkness. Right. But if they were believers, roll on the blunt, we got to have a different conversation. For right. Them. Right. These dudes got three or four chicks that they mess with. They ain't saved. They're in sin. So guess what they're doing? They are sinning. I'm not there when they're hooking up with their girls. But those are my dudes. And I want to be a light shining to darkness. Right. I want to be a reminder that there's a different way. And I need proximity to do that. But let me tell you who I don't mess with. Believers who are hoes. Mm. That's who I don't hang with. Right. I can't hang around no hoe and believers. I'd have goodness. to I'd have to run away from the whole world to get rid of hoes that's in the world. Right. But within my common unity, I'm not messing with no hoe and believers. Mm -hmm. Now, if you if you slipped and fail, that's one thing. But you slip and falling every day, that's a habit, fam. Stop calling it a slip. Mm -hmm. You ain't even wearing shoes no more. The bottom of your feet are banana peels. If you think you're still slipping, you're not slipping. You want to do that. Just say that. Intentionally. Intentionally. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worships idols or is abusive or is a drunkard uh, or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. Here we, here we go. Oh. This, is about to, this is about to murk some people. It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders. If I wish it. It could have been a period right there. It's not. It's a comma. Lord Jesus. It's just it's a comma. It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders. Right. There's a whole lot of stuff right now about Diddy. All these rumors are swelling about Diddy and what he's doing and blah, blah, yep. blah, blah. Yep. Well, I, I, don't have no, I don't have no judgment for that man. Yep. I have good news for him. Oh, come on. I have good news for Diddy. Come on. Jesus, Jesus loves him so much. No, no, let me back up. God loved him so much. That's it. That he sent his son to die for his sins. That's good news for Diddy. Not you're going to hell. Right. That's the comment section right now. The good news for Diddy is God loves you so much, Diddy. God, hey, Diddy. God loves you so much he sent his son to die for your sins. Like, for real, for real. Like, for real, for real. And if you were to accept him, he could free you from every chain of sin and bondage that you could have possibly ever put yourself in. He, he's done it before. He'll do it again. If you choose... To make that decision, though, then I got bad news. <laughs> he died for you, and you got to die for him. Wow. You got to die to your will, die to your way. Die to your lifestyle, die to your habits. <laughs> die to the way that you would like to do things. And re put your faith in the written word. His laws, his principles, his decrees, his commandments, his precepts. It isn't my responsibility to judge out to judge outsiders, but it is certainly your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. God will judge those on the outside, but as the scriptures say, you must remove the evil person from among you. You can't remove a, a evil person from among you unless you have proximity to them. Come on, dude. So why are you talking about a dude that's three thousand miles away in another state? That, that you've never met, doesn't go to your church, but you on the internet talking about, don't listen to this dude, he's a false prophet. <laughs> you can't, you, you just want them, you, you just, you just, you just drawing your audience, your audience's attention to said individual? Mm. If they were into you, do you think they were into them? Mm. Check your teaching. 
Right. If you're teaching the truth, then people will know when somebody's teaching false. But I ain't going to draw no attention to no other person's platform, especially if I disagree with them. I'm right. not going to even bring them up. Okay, let me give you one more. I've read this before, but it just... Read it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 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 um, these, these guys were pissed at uh, Peter and John. And uh, they, they didn't know what to do with them. The Pharisees are just mad. They're, they're like, I don't... Oh, these guys get on my nerves. Um so the Pharisees are like arguing back and forth. What should we do? And uh, let me pick up at verse number 33. This is Acts chapter number five, verse number 33. When they heard this, the high council was furious and decided to kill them, decided to kill Peter and the apostles. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, Gamaliel is the, uh, is the rabbi that taught Paul. This is the same Gamaliel, Okay. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the men be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Now, remember, the Pharisees literally wanted to cancel them, not the way we, we talk about canceling, but they wanted to cancel their lives, like literally. They wanted them dead uh, for what they were teaching. Gamaliel ushers them out. Then he says to his colleagues, men of Israel, take care of what you are planning to do to these men. Some time ago, there was that fellow Thutis who pretended to be someone great. About 400 others joined him, but he was killed, and all his followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. D do y'all hear the language that's being used? Followers joined him, liked, subscribed. Think about it. And all his followers went their various ways. The movement, the whole movement came to an end. After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. He got people to follow him, but he was killed too. And all his followers were scattered. Think about it. They were all killed, but not at the hands of the Pharisees. Right. You, 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 there's so many people out here that like, oh, God, kill this person. What if he's showing the grace? Scripture says, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. So what if God has actually given them a chance to repent and he doesn't need your help? Wow. <laughs> so my advice is, leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing things that are merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. And his strong implication is, and we won't have to do it. Right. But if it is from God... You will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. Come on. That's why I leave people alone. Because the wheat grows with the tear. Mm. I see a lot of stuff I don't like, but in God's own time, he'll let it be known that if it, if it was really from him or if it wasn't. It, maybe, maybe it's just done in a way that I don't like. Maybe they talk in a way that I don't like. Maybe they present themselves. There, there are some people I see, I think they're too flashy, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's just a personal preference. Yeah. I don't want to be that flashy. That ain't even a conviction. That ain't even a sin. It's just, I, I just don't get down like that, right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach people. Oh, I don't, man. I'm. There it is. I'm just trying to teach people. Let him cook. I'm just trying to teach people that you can have a better quality of life, right? If you would see the body of Christ the way Jesus died for it. And if you wouldn't go around driving yourself crazy when you see stuff that you don't like, but it's not on your watch. Wow. Perhaps we should take the wisdom of Gamaliel that taught Paul. And this is this is a philosophy that Paul started to use in his own earthly ministry as well. I think I'm done. And then I'm not. Keep going, brother. <laughs> Keep going, brother. So Paul starts talking about, um, it's one of the reasons why he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but by principle. It's, it's, it's his way of governing and saying, that, like, I'm not going to be going against, I'm not going to be fighting against all these different people, right? Uh, 
But then he goes on to say, uh, Romans 12, uh, verse number three, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, uh, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. <laughs> Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. That's how you measure yourself. Verse number 16, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Mm. And don't think you know it all. Oh, it's Sheesh. too good. It's just too good. Oh, there's so much in here that I want to read. I, I just wish I could just... Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans chapter number um, 16, verse number 17. And now... I make one more appeal, my brothers and my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Judge that. Judge me on that. If you think I'm talking smooth and trying to deceive you, Unsubscribe. <laughs> Bye. Stop liking. Stop following. Delete. 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 If y'all everything, I'm getting out of pocket like that. Just, just delete it. Oh, there, oh man, I could go through every single book. I got so many highlights. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. I'm just think, turning pages. Were you about you to say something, baby? When you think you're done, but it just keeps going. It keeps keep, it keeps going. I'll give you one that, that should sober us. This is, this is 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. <laughs> uh, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge, not that I've ever fallen into, indulge. Mm. You, can, you, can, you can make a mistake. Right. Indulging in something? Whoa. You're willingly, you willingly have a desire mm -hmm. to partake in something, right? Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Sounds like he's lowering, he's, he's bringing down the hammer, right? Are you ready for the very next sentence? Some of you were once like that. Jeez. So let's 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 re, let's reverse engineer. Some of you were once like that. Once like what, Paul? You indulged in sexual sin. You worshipped idols. You committed adultery. Some of you were male prostitutes, and you practiced homosexuality, and you were thieves, and you were greedy, and you were drunkard, and abusive, and you cheat people. What is he saying? All of y'all are in the church. Right. Mm. <laughs> Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. Yeah. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. And noticing that he's not, he's not like yelling this out to like the non-believers. These are like specifically just the Christians. That's exactly themselves. right. That's exactly right, baby. He's not like, non-believers you're doing this like they like we know that yeah exactly but the christians they're like we're pointing this out so that's right no that's right but all, you all of, you, but you've been cleansed that's exactly right so, yeah. baby all of these letters are written to believers not one of these letters is written to unbelievers he's trying to remind believers of how to act not unbelievers oh <sighs> Okay. First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter number nine. Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under the law, under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who were under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from the law, from that law, 
so that I can bring them to Christ. I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. It's just too good. Keep going. We can't <laughs> stop. We're too deep now. Hey, we are deep in this. We love it, brother. I'm, I'm just, if y'all just want to know where I get it from, this is, this is where I get it from. Like, I just, I got all these highlights in the Bible because these are all the things that have shaped the way I do what I do and the way he called me to do it. Like, it's just that simple. So... Oh, I'm I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop. I'm turning pages and I'm I'm like, okay, okay. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Uh uh. I'm not gonna do that. All right. I'm a I'ma skip it. I'ma skip it. I'ma skip it. I'ma keep going. I'ma keep going. Nope. I'ma keep going. Yep, we're good. One more? I'm a, I'm gonna stop. Three more? <laughs> Come on, just flip one more page. Uh one more just, for Christ. One more for Christ. One more for me. For us, all of us, the whole team, <laughs> and God, and God. <laughs> no, it's good. Pressure's on. <laughs> it's no, it's good. It's good. I, I am. Um, I really. Oh, this is so okay. It's too much. It's good. Okay, Tim. That call out culture. Do you think? Or thoughts on this? <sighs> do you think they might not have a lot of empathy for other people? That's why it's so easy to make a reaction video about someone else, call them out on Instagram, and tag them. Like, does that person not? maybe have a deeper level of love for others that they don't know personally? Well, I, I think like um, many of the people in the Bible, th there is a, um, uh, th they're, 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 they're passionate. Mm. They, they have convictions that they're passionate about um, and um, they, they want people to know. And they actually do feel compelled like, to point out, like, no, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I only tell people they're wrong to their face. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause who gonna listen to you? <laughs> How many people have you listened to that you don't know tell you something that they disagree with about you? You write it off. How many? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I Outside of relationship, I don't know, or, or relational equity, and I don't mean relationship like only the homie can tell me. Right. But somebody that I have proximity with, that I can have a conversation with, blah, 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 blah. We went through this uh, uh, earlier in the year around the strong language stuff, and, and uh, you know, everybody had their say and blah, 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 blah. I only had, like, two people that were down to have a conversation with me. And when I talked to them privately, they were not – they didn't have the same energy that they had publicly. Right. I didn't ask them to take their comments down. I didn't ask them to change their position. But I thought it was very, very interesting that once we got on the phone, they did not say with the same energy what they said publicly, privately. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. I kind of thought to myself, hmm, interesting. So with a little bit of context and hearing my voice, you don't feel the same way as you did when you heard my 90-second clip and you were very, very far away and just thought I was maybe just some AI robot <laughs> that's been generated to piss people off online. AI Timmy. Right? So I, I, I really do think that um, our, our ability to... Our ability to connect to one another is absolutely important and essential. Right if it's going to lead to understanding. Right. And if I am ever misguided or in sin on something, the very best chance of me correcting that is done in love by somebody who is in close proximity to me that I know actually cares about me and for me. 
has your best interest. Has my best interest at heart. And that's very rarely going to come from a stranger. Right. Very, very rarely. So, um, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are we doing? Voice note or chat? Up to you. Uh, Voice note. Right. We told some people to voice note, so let's voice note. Yeah, people came through. We got one. This one is anonymous, so... Hi, Tim. Thank you so much for just, you know, being you and for answering this question. You definitely have blessed me with your podcast and your vulnerability. So thank you. My question um, is, so I'm in a relationship with a man who is also God fearing and we're both working on our relationships with the Lord individually and together, but he doesn't necessarily believe that God made sex for marriage. And so sometimes it makes are you know physical boundaries difficult for me to adhere to and it's just hard for me to find a balance between being patient because we are both pursuing God um, but also being realistic because this is you know it can be a big hurdle for us so yeah I appreciate you asking the question um, if he doesn't believe sex is for marriage um, then why would he ever believe it's only exclusive for you Like this, this is a. I can only take it the way you, that you described it to me. Yeah. And what I would say to you is, if this man doesn't believe that sex is exclusively for marriage, then why would it ever be exclusive to you? Mm. And if you were, if you believe that sex is for marriage and you maintain your boundary, we can only conclude that at one, at some point, he is going to get sex from somebody else, if you choose to abstain until marriage. We can also conclude that if you were ever to get married and go through a season where you all cannot be physically intimate, he is probably going to step out and have sex with somebody else. Mm. Now, if you were to ask him these questions and his answers would be no, then he needs to reframe how he is stating his sexual need and or desire or as he sees it theologically in Scripture. Because it is very, very clear and very, very loud to me that if he doesn't see it for marriage, he wants to create the loophole so he can have sex with you whenever he wants. Basically what he's saying is, I, I don't want to wait for you until marriage. Mm. So give it to me now. And that's selfish. Yeah. Yeah. He, and if he can't wait now, why would he wait later? Trying to help somebody. You're helping somebody. And you're and you I can hear the conviction in your voice. You you're you're trying to maintain that boundary. And I'm telling you, you need to maintain that boundary. Yeah. I don't know the last time you all were physically intimate, or if you've ever been, but if you said it makes it hard. If you have been physically intimate and but this is a bound but you feel convicted every time you 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 breach that that boundary, what I'm going to ask you to do is that for the next 45 days, don't give him none to see what happens. Sheesh. And you do, thank you, Holy Spirit, you cannot be afraid of this man leaving you. Wow. If he leaves you because you choose to, uh, uh, you, you choose not to have sex until you all get married, he is not the man of your dreams. Mm -mm. he will be the man of your nightmares. So I would close the candy shop now. Let that man know there is no more milk and cookies for you. Nada. Until we say I do. Right, right. And and, and if he's already had it, he should know it's, he should know it's bomb. Like if he, if he can't live with that memory and want it again on his wedding day, then that, that ain't your man. As the old saints say, it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so I'm telling you right now, close that candy shop now. <laughs> it's tight, but it's right. Amen, brother. <laughs> Keep that to yourself, Ma. I'm telling you right now. And I'm talking as a big brother right now. Yep. Don't let these dudes be running up in you. 
and then trying to get loopholes with scripture, I don't believe that sex is uh, 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 just for marriage. When you have sex, you are married. <laughs> Tell homie to make it legal. Right. Y'all can go to the Justice of the Peace today. Y'all can have a wedding event later. But in the same way Jude won't jump in the car and take a, a, a road trip without having his driver's license, don't let this man ride you <laughs> without having a marriage license. Right. Ooh. Y'all got me back in my young adult bag. Aha. Uh-huh. Them, them bricks know this cadence right here. I don't play none of that stuff. And 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 anytime I... Uh, um, we, Ne- it, uh, it inevitably there's always one person either a guy or girl yeah fool you would say that uh, you would say that but you married you got somebody to go home to as if i don't have options oh wow you know how much i travel uh-huh you act like I, you act like i ain't got options nice hotel too stop playing mm-hmm. y'all stop playing stop acting like married people don't don't have don't have to uh, abstain in the same way single people do. Sure, sure. because we're married, we get to have sex with our spouse, but let's not act like we don't have temptations <laughs> like single people have. If you don't discipline your body when you're single, you will not discipline your body when you're married. That's why we tell you to abstain. That's why we tell you not to watch porn and masturbate. Right. That's why we tell you not to get addicted to your hand. Or addicted to a wand. Whoa. I'm up on game, fam. Don't stop playing. Y'all, when, y'all when, don't want me. Y'all. Mm-mm. When you say you got options, and we know you're not, you're not even saying that arrogantly. I bet you I'm not saying it arrogantly. Just, this is matter of fact. And this is for anybody too, because everybody has fam, options. If I don't, if I don't recognize that I have those options, if I don't acknowledge that, guess what? I'm gonna play myself. You know how many of my friends? Not not friends. I w- I would say uh, acquaintances in ministry wind up cheating on their wives and getting a divorce because it never they never really checked in with their own body to be like I am capable right. of doing the fool. Yeah. The person that thinks they're incapable of doing the fool winds up doing the fool. I would never do that. You've never had a scenario. Don't say what you've never done if you've never even presented with the scenario. What I do is not wait for the scenario to present itself. I run scenarios through my mind. (laughs) (sighs) Thank you. I really appreciate this poll. It better stay in the 90s, too. (laughs) (laughs) It better stay in the 90s, too, because if if, if that thing goes, if that thing goes over 10 percent for I think it's okay, I will cook y'all with this book for another hour. Don't play with me. You're a dweller. <laughs> Somebody said they're gonna do it on purpose. Somebody said Trace it. Trace it. <laughs> Somebody <Someone> said. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening right. to you, and I'm like, Nah, yeah, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. You're not y'all nine percent that think it's okay. It's not okay. And you you can't make me. You can't. You don't have Bible for it to be okay. Woo. If you if you the nine percent that thinks it's okay, put the Bible verse in the chat. I will wait. I will wait on you. No. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. Oh, we need you, Lord. Come on. If you if you think that it is. Okay, put it in the chat. Put the Bible verse in the chat that you stand on. <laughs> Time's ticking. Yeah, put the Bible verse in the chat. It's really good. It's like <laughs> somebody said it's not okay. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> I gonna, love you, Tynesha. <laughs> I'm gonna I love you, homie. You. I love you. Hey, uh, Kevin, go back up to Kevin. Kevin Schubert. Uh, wife and I lived together before marriage, gave our lives to Jesus, and went to the courthouse that month. Salute. Kev. That's how you course correct, right? Like, you can't, you're not responsible for what, for, for what you didn't know. But once you know, that's when you make your pivot. <laughs> Wrong button, gang. <laughs> <laughs> They're all saying sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody said play Jeopardy music. We get, oh, we get that's so funny. <laughs> Uh, I'll get demonetized for this. I don't care. Yeah, right. You got all these other people right. saying all the all the perverted stuff they want. Breaking but, in the dough. But when we talking about like a pure heart. Right. I'm not talking about purity culture. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am big into sex and sexuality. God gave it to us. We are sexual beings, and I'm all about that. We I had somebody last week um say uh, show me where it says we're sexual beings in the body. <laughs> yeah. so show me where it says that we're sexual beings in the Bible. I was like, Genesis 1, be fruitful and multiply? <laughs> it Do, says it right there. If you don't think that involves penises and vaginas, uh -huh. then I don't know how you think the world has been going on for the last 2,000 plus years. Well, or 6,000 plus years. Whatever y'all, creationists or whatever y'all think. People have been doing it for a long time, fam. That's all I'm saying. Um, so I, I'm telling y'all, y'all bodies, man. Oh, there it goes. Let me hey. back. Let me back that thing up too. And and we're and we're back to it. We're back to it, baby. We're back to it. You know we don't leave it. We can't. We just can't escape. And we're not gonna. All right. So this is uh, uh boom. Uh, okay, so so let me start from verse number twelve. You say, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter number six, starting at verse number twelve. You say, I am not, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Whoa. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. <laughs> you say, food was made for the stomach, and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? It, 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 it gives a new, scripturally, it gives a new perspective to what's your body count. Mm. Spiritually, as a believer, here's how we would, we wouldn't say what's your body count. What we, we, what we would say is how many people you've been married to. Ooh. How many illegal marriages have you been in? For the scriptures say the two are united into one, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Y'all ready for it? Run from sexual sin. That's the problem with y'all. Y'all niggas got on walking shoes and you need runner shoes. Your, your problem is you don't have enough self-control to run. That's the only way to avoid sexual sin. You got to put on a tracksuit. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. So sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to God, given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. The reason why Juliet has exclusivity to my body because my body belongs to Jesus and her. It's the vow I made. It doesn't matter if my body wants to go out to seven other people. It does not have permission. Because it belongs to Jesus first and it belongs to Juliet second. You do not belong for, to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Mm -hmm. I'm letting it marinate. Let it marinate. I know, I know, I know se sex comes up big in culture. Sex comes, so, comes up so big in culture all the time. Uh, but the fact, the, but, but I don't care what, what, what these sexual experts are saying. It will not, it, it will not supersede what Christ has put in, 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 in this holy book. Mi Santa Biblia es verdad. Aha. Uh -huh. See? Yes. 
Sí. Another poll too. Mi Santa Biblia es verdad. What's your opinion on oral sex before marriage? Before marriage, it's it's a sin. Thank you, 90%. It's okay with me. Y'all just like getting heads. Say that. <laughs> wow. Just be straight up with it. Just be straight up with it. Th these polls on sex, I'm I'm y'all let me know if y'all disciples or not. Woo! Stop coming in here. If you if 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 it's if it's okay with you, I'm cool with it. I'm not sure, but I'm telling you right now, so you can be sure. Any sexual activity prior to marriage is a part of sexual sin. So I'm not just talking about penis and vaginal connection. Mm. I am talking about mouth on clit. I am talking about mouth on penis. I am talking about hand on penis. I'm talking about foot on penis. I'm talking about grinding through clothes on. How many ways do you want me to do it? I'm talking about anal sex. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about fingers. Mm -hmm. How many ways do you want it? Mm -hmm. I'm just getting a rub up against it. And you're going home with blue balls. Fam, why are you doing this to yourself? Virtual sex. Virtual sex. Huh? Oh, like, pho like phone sex? Yeah, phone sex, FaceTime virtual sex. sex. Um, um, um... Yeah, there's yeah, there's that yeah, that's a thing now. That's a whole industry. Mm -hmm. So listen, just be honest and say I have a hard time killing my flesh and its sexual desires. Say that. Right. We can now we can start something. If you can't own that, then we can't go anywhere. No. But you keep living a you keep leaving it out for yourself. You can't go to sleep at night unless you masturbate and ejaculate. Whoa. Unless you have an orgasm, that's the only way you can go to sleep. You have a ha you have an addictive habitual problem. Yeah. I'm just calling it out. I'm calling a spade a spade. And there is freedom for you, but you have to confess that. Right. You cannot get free from anything you cannot confess. And you cannot get free from anything you keep making excuses for. Sheesh. You have a pet sin and you're trying to keep it in a dark corner. Turn all the lights on. Come on. I'm trying to I'm trying to help y'all. He's on one today, folks. Come out now. I'm telling you. We live in a very sexually perverse society. You can't press B and be down here. You can be down. You can press B and come down here horny. But what you ain't going to do is come down here and get an orgy. Right. The devil is a lie. Uh-huh. What, what's the nope still strong? Still oh, still wrong. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay with me. Y'all at four percent. I'm cool. Again, I'm I'm cool with the. I'm not sure. But I can't be wrong button game twice. But 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 four percent of y'all saying it's okay with me. Just listen. If it's okay with you, question your salvation. Wow. Wow. And go read all all uh um uh all of God by John Bevere. Cause you may you may really love Jesus, but you don't fear him. Mm, come on. I haven't watched porn in three or four weeks. Caleb, salute. Caleb Blackwell, come I on. salute you. Thank you so much. Let's go. We're already past no fat November. Right. Let's do it December. Let, how about we just crucify our flesh? Mm -hmm. No uh go back up. Uh, no, master, no, no masturbating in marriage if you neglect your partner. Absolutely. Come on. Don't have a burger when you could have a full course meal. Yes, sir. With dessert. I would never. I would never stop by Chipotle if Julia's cooking dinner at home. Uh huh. Right. If I'm going three or four days, um, if I'm if I'm going three or four days and I'm traveling, uh, then when I come home. I'm just I'm just sexually hungry. Right. But I ain't looking at porn in my hotel room. Right. I ain't pulling it up on my phone. I'm not pulling it up on the TV, on the hotel, in those hotel rooms that still have it. I'm actually checking in with my body to make sure, hey, body, what are you feeling right now? Right. And my body will tell me exactly what I'm feeling. And as my body is telling me what I'm feeling, that's when I'll start checking in with myself and going, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm hungry. My sexual desire has spiked. And when I when I come home, I'm going to eat. Right. I'm trying to give y'all game. Mm -hmm. Trying to give y'all game.
So I I hope that's helping y'all. Yeah. I hope that's helping y'all. Hit another voice note or stay here? No, I hit the other voice note. I'm good. I got you. This one will be anonymous as well. Hello, Basement family. I had to disguise my voice a little bit because I don't want to be canceled. Here is my question for Tim. How would you help somebody in a good Christian marriage who feels that they are starving emotionally, physically, sexually, and spiritually to some degree, even though you go to church on the regular and serve at very high capacities? You don't want to go to Costco or the mall for the free samples in the food court <laughs> because when you are starving, any food or anything has the potential to be a temptation. Thanks for taking my question. I appreciate you all so much and the work that you do. It inspires me on the daily. Have a great day. Love this dude. I know, dude. <laughs> I, hey, and, and I, I just want to, I just want to say, um, I know it took a lot for you. You could have wrote that. Um, I, I, I want to be very, very sensitive. Um, the fact that you had to dif disguise your voice, I, I understand why. Uh, but I appreciate you being bold enough to ask your question. Right. Um. Anyway, the first thing I want to do is, um, uh, just whole space um for what i feel would be sadness loneliness yeah. um disconnection uh to be starving in all of those areas financially relationally emotionally spiritually it it can be devastating to be married to your partner and feel like you're living in a desert and to literally not have a connection point with them on any level, right? It's it's one thing if you're three out of four or 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 three out of five. But man, I'm I'm not having a connection physically, sexually, emotionally. You, you got a roommate, and we first have to acknowledge how heartbreaking that is that you, you you signed up to be in relationship with a lifelong partner um, to grow in intimacy and love for each other and you feel that that's not there that that's that's heartbreaking that's devastating yeah. so I want to acknowledge that before a lot of times people um, they answer questions and and they don't really even take a moment to acknowledge um, the feelings of the person. And so, man, that's a lot to grieve. That's a lot to long for. That's a lot to be um, sad about. Um, and it seems like this is going to sound very, very, this might sound strange, but it seems like um, the church attendance is actually a false way for your partner to feel like everything's okay because that's how people throw jesus glitter on right. uh bad parts of their life is i go to church right they actually might be using the church as the well, how do i want to describe this it feels like they're actually using the church as a buffer to keep a wedge between the two of you being intimate with each other. And so God now becomes <laughs> uh, the reason why uh, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm going to church, I'm doing this, I'm going, I'm doing that. Um, obviously there needs to be some, some, um, marriage counseling if your partner is not open to going to marriage counseling i would strongly suggest you go for yourself a lot of times uh and i would go for this specific reason that you have right now because um 
the therapist, if your spouse doesn't want to go to therapy with you, the, ther- the therapist could give you language that will allow you to come home and have the type of conversations that need to precipitate change. Now, anytime there's going to be change, there's going to be disruption. So I just want you to know, um, if you start addressing and confronting this behavior, even in the most loving way, it's going to get colder than what it already is. So if you feel like, you know, you've been living in Alaska, you bring this up, it's going to turn into Antarctica. (laughs) Uh, But sometimes uh, you need to blow up the version of your marriage that has not been working so you can get to the version of your marriage that does work. And so uh, my encouragement to you is um, to submit lovingly. Hey, and, 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 and it's all in the way you present it, too. So let me kind of role play. One, one of the things that I would say uh, to Juliet, if I was in the scenario that you find yourself in, I would say, um, hey, babe, is right now uh, a bad time for us to talk? And uh, again, I'm asking a no oriented question. If you haven't gotten never split the difference, do you even listen to the, the basement <laughs> on a regular basis? I'm just fine. Um, but this is all from uh, Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference. A no oriented question gets you much more information than a yes oriented question. So I would say, hey, babe, uh, would now be a bad time for us to have a conversation? No, honey, what do you want to talk about? I miss you. I miss you so much. I I know that we see each other every day. We talk to each other every day. Um, We sleep in the same bed. Um, But I feel so far away from you, and I can't even put my finger on it. I don't know if it's you. I don't know if it's me, but I long to be connected to you emotionally, spiritually, relationally, physically. Would you be would you be against us having the strongest connection we could possibly have? Do you think it would be impossible for us to have the type of connection that we used to have when we first got married? Would you be opposed to us going to marriage counseling? These are just some ways that I would get into uh, some of that. Trying to give some uh, Mika said, "Husbands take note. Please take notes. I'm giving y'all free game. Giving y'all free ninety nine. Please yeah. take it. Yeah. So uh, that's that. Want to hit another? Yeah, let's hit it. Gotcha. Please excuse my voice. I'm a little under the weather right now. Um, but my question is, how do you know when?" certain traits are worth sticking out. I know in a previous video you mentioned even if he doesn't know how to lead, that character is there and that's what matters. What if it's things like consistency or time management, different things like that. Um, And when I say consistency, not necessarily that he's inconsistent with me, but just his own life and how he, like patterns and different things like that. Is that something that is still worth seeing through? Or does that fall under a character issue? It's definitely worth uh, seeing through. I I believe I can hear your heart on this question. Here's what I would say. Uh, First of all, thank you for asking the question. I love you so much. Um, uh, Partnership within marriage is so important. And one of the things that the enemy is always trying to do between the spouses is use our wirings against each other Mm. is to use our strengths and our weaknesses against each other i'm strong in an area she's weak in an area she's strong in an area i'm weak in in an area and instead of just seeing them as strengths and weaknesses we see them as uh these human flaws that need to be fixed when the truth of the matter is this is why i need my partner and so if i'm not good organizationally and she is, we need to partner. If I'm good with time management and he isn't, we need to partner. If I'm better financially with the money than they are, we need to partner. 
like don't look at your your um differences as uh things to be divided over and and these deep flaws that need to be corrected sometimes it's about collaboration and partnership a lot of times it's about collaboration and partnership and so um there are certain things uh and juliet and i just have a natural rhythm that we slotted in i wouldn't say that we believe in traditional husband wife roles what we believe in is strengths and weaknesses and so it's like girl whatever you strong in and i'm weak in you got to spearhead that and where i'm strong and you're weak i got to spearhead that because if you keep trying to do it all i'm gonna do is get pissed off and if i keep trying to do it all you're gonna do is get pissed off so i relinquish i relinquish what i'm not good at point blank period i don't care where it falls under a man should do this and a woman i I don't care really it's just a matter of who does better with this and who does better with that and then let's let's handle it from there so um what i would um the 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 way i would broach that subject with with your honey is uh i would say um hey i i want us to be great partners um and i want to team up for us to be great uh, are you opposed to us collaborating on 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 different rhythms of our life where 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 we feel like we can benefit each other and then um allow him uh, i would take a poll uh with with him and 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 allow him to maybe come to you and say hey tell me tell me the areas where you think are weakest for you where i could help you and vice versa i want to give you the, the the weakest areas of my life that where you can help me and see if they even match because a lot of times we can be doing something as men i can only speak as a man we can, i could be doing something and think i'm great and that it's not a big deal and it could drive my wife mad right um but w- without without me being able to see that her way mm-hmm. i'll think it you just you're just griping you're just complaining or whatever and and so have a broader discussion than to just come in aiming at this thing but y'all can definitely work that out that's light work homie yep. i promise you i'm 24 years in that's light work yep. yeah let's hit another voice hi theo tam ah. recent dweller janetis here Um, I know that part of being human is just to sin. Uh, I know that the goal is to sin less and not be sinless because we're never going to be perfect. But if you're constantly like doing the same sin, right? Like at what point is that just a blatant disregard for God versus you just saying, you know, I am human and I'm going to sin. Like where's that line? Because I'm having a lot of trouble with abstinence right now and i'm just trying to figure out um if i'm trying as hard as i can to avoid putting myself in situations where i'm gonna sin i'm gonna fail Mm -hmm. um but i do sometimes every now and then like at what point do you say okay well like you're just not taking this seriously yeah so you're at that point now (laughs) you're at that point where you are aware of the fact that something needs to change (laughs) so so yeah when i say sin less i'm not talking about habitual sin okay so let me give you let me make sure let me make sure you have clarity on that uh hebrews i'm so grateful that y'all are this transparent y'all y'all make me so happy y'all make my life easy it's precious hearing their voices it is all right uh therefore this this is hebrews chapter number 12 therefore since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses to the life of faith let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up we have to strip ourselves away from that and let us run with endurance the race that god has set before us so weight and sin are two different things. Now we've talked a lot about a sexual sin. So you, so as it relates to to you trying to achieve abstinence and that being a difficult struggle, we're talking about a sin. We're not talking about a weight. Okay, so we made that straight. Um, but we have to strip that off of us. 
So when you have something like abstinence and you realize that it's an issue and it's problematic to the point that it precipitated you asking this question, you know you've already crossed the line. Mm -hmm. Scripture says to him that knows to do right and does wrong to him or her, that is mm -hmm. sin. So you know this is a sin. And so, girlfriend, you, 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 you the whole, the whole, you got to pivot from the whole cadence. Like your body's already used to a certain rhythm. And at certain times, because you're not checking in with your body, you're clueless to when you're about to go down that road. Mm. And it, it can happen to all of us if we're not dialed in and, and checking in with ourselves often. Remember, the body keeps the score. The body's actually already displaying the scoreboard. We never check it. Scoreboard! Your body will tell you, I'm going to bone tonight. <laughs> if you don't check in, right. you're going to bone tonight. I'm trying to tell y'all. So, here's what I need y'all to do. <laughs> that was, <perfect>. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ding perfect. dong. I have an idea. So, so, um, so, some things need to change for you. And whatever that rhythm looks like, only you know that. So, I can't, I can't speak to what that rhythm needs to look like. Uh, but I'll tell you, I played myself before I gave my life. Uh, uh, no, I had just given my life to Jesus. I was still living in California. And I remember um, the Holy Spirit convicted me of sin. This girl called me really late at night. And uh, I told her I was coming over. And the Holy Spirit told me not to go over there. And he did not stop telling me to go over there until she answered that door with that T-shirt on. And that's all she had on was a T-shirt. And I walked in there, overrode what the Holy Spirit was telling me to do, fell into sexual sin with her. And then when she came back from the restroom, I was on the edge of the bed, bawling my eyes out. I didn't want to feel that no more. So I had to change. Well, what's one of the changes that I immediately had to do? I ain't answering the call from no opposite sex mm. after 10 o'clock at night. This is back when I was single. Can't do it. If if I'm a, if I'm attracted to a girl, if I'm attracted to her, I don't need to know if she's attracted to me. I I just I just stay away from her, old girl. I don't even talk to her no more. She didn't do nothing wrong. This has nothing to do with her. This has everything to do with me. Why? Because I want to keep myself. I can't rely on the other person. See, some of y'all be trying to rely on your partner to keep you saved, right? Like if you do right, then I can do right. I'm not I'm not basing my salvation on somebody else's free will. Right. What if they're having a weak day and I'm having a weak day? Right. But I was depending on them to hold me accountable. Nah, man. Nah. Yeah. No. So you gotta you gotta have um you, you gotta have a different rhythm to your whole life. Uh when I was a young adult pastor, um we had we had young men and young women that uh uh came on Friday nights and, and the young women said, Hey yo, um uh, if any guy wants to date me, he has to come. He has to date me on a Friday night when I come to young adult ministry. Come on. And then if he wants to take me on on the date afterwards, it has to be where, where we're already having the after party. Come on. Because we would have an after party after every service on Fridays. And that's the only time she would see him because she wanted to be in an environment where there were other believers around because she didn't trust herself to date him on a Saturday night. Come on. And then go home afterwards. Safety. So he had to meet her there, which means they were in separate cars. They met at the church. Then they drove in separate cars to the restaurant, and they got to sit together when there was 150 other people packed in the IHOP, at, packed in the IHOP or Don Pablo's. And afterwards, maybe they gave themselves a kiss, but they weren't, like, tonguing each other up and hands moving up and down and jumping in the same car and rubbing necks and getting home and, oh, it's late now. You know what? I'm so afraid that if you go home, you might crash. Right. And so, okay, but we won't do anything, so I'll sleep on the couch and you sleep in your bedroom and I'll leave early in the morning. Guess what? You wake up the next morning, you go for that goodbye kiss, and that goodbye kiss turns into sex. <laughs> French love. And then you're like, uh, how did this happen? You played yourself the night before. Uh -huh. <laughs> so stop playing with it. Stop playing. So just you need to pivot the whole framework of how you're seeing. You already know that sex is an issue for you. Now that you know that, Come what on. is the game plan? Come on. Know thyself. 
What are the lies you tell yourself to position yourself to even get into the place where you're like, oops, I did it again. Again, you got to be willing to live with no dark corners. Okay. We strategize in the basement. Hey, we do. We game plan. We got to have a game plan. We do this when we when we travel. Yes, we do. We have a game plan. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, if you like taking a walk, mm -hmm. you always put your location on. Yo, I'm about to take a walk. It's going to take this long. Put my location services on. I'm about to take this walk. When we were in Vegas, we all walked together. Yes, we did. <laughs> it was a unit, brother. We are not walking on the Vegas Strip by ourselves individually. We are not playing ourselves like that. Though. We're just not doing it. We all went to the the uh the the water the 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 fountain. The fountains. We went to the Bellagio fountains four deep. And we went right back home. We watched it. <laughs> Cried. <laughs> like we were in Ocean's Eleven and we were like, this is great. And we went straight back to the hotel room. We did not pass go. We did not fool ourselves. Two were married, two were single. We don't care. We went together. Come on. Be Why? Here. Because we want to live a thousand feet above reproach. That's it, bro. I don't want nobody even squinting their eyes like, what? It's t Tim just walking down Vegas? I'm not scared of Vegas. And I know me. Mm -hmm. Two things can be true. Yes, sir. Right? I've had, I've had, I can't tell you how many, uh, I, this might be the first time I'm ever saying this publicly, so don't make this a clip. This is not a clip. Um, uh, uh, I, I think I've been invited to Brazil over 20 times. I've declined every single one of them. If I go to Brazil, Juliet must be handcuffed to me. Brazilian women are just, if they look like Juliet and they're Brazilian and they speak Portuguese, there might be a problem. Yeah. So I'm not going. Yeah. Oh, but you're a man of God. <laughs> you're a man of God and you love your wife and you have kids and all that kind of stuff. And yes, and there's a bunch of bunda in Brazil. And I don't need to be, I don't need to see it that up close. God bless Brazil. So there's somebody to evangelize y'all that ain't me. There's another Tim Ross out there somewhere. There, I bet you there is. Yeah. That ain't got my issues. Yeah. You just got to be able to call your own foul. It's some places I just ain't going. Right. <laughs> we were supposed to. Let me tell you how real we keep it. Me and Jew. So um, uh, I got it. I got it. I got um, offered a job to be a young adult pastor in Miami before I took the job at uh, Potter's House. And uh, Ju Juliet. Um, is Caribbean, mm -hmm. and she has family in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, all of that area. So I'm like, cool. I want to get, I want to, I want to get them in. Uh, I want to get her back in that area. We didn't have kids at that time or anything, right? This is oh, this is like oh five, oh six. So she was like, uh, uh, I have a couple of questions to ask you before you take this job, and she said. Ba she said, based on the way that you answer this, these two questions, it'll let me know if we if we move to Miami or not. I was like, oh, okay. So she goes, question number one. She said, uh, question number one, um, who are you going to be accountable to if we move to Australia? Uh, not to Australia. If we move to Miami, who are we going to be accountable to? And I said, um, I, I, I'm going to, I already told the executive pastor about uh, my struggles and issues, and so I'll be fine if I do that, right? And she was like, okay, cool. And I said, I'm also going to be accountable to the people back in Dallas because I can just be on the phone with them. She said, cool. You ready for the second question she asked me? She said, how are you going to stay away from all these Cuban women? That was her second question. How are you going to stay away from all these Cuban women? And I said, I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. And we didn't move. It wasn't spiritual. It was super practical. So when you don't when 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 you don't have the when, when you don't have the thought in your mind to be that transparent, then that's when that's when you're going to play yourself. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to ever be in a situation where I don't have my partner that can see my blind spots. She asked that one question and it was a wrap. How are you going to stay away from them Cuban women? Oh, my bad. Didn't think about that. Right. We're not moving. Right. The end. Right. 
It wasn't deep. It's not that deep, people. I love Cubans. But Miami? Somebody calling me Poppy? Whoa. That was probably going to be an issue. Yeah. And she saw the blind spot. I didn't. I was just thinking about the Lord and thinking about preaching and thinking about young adults, thinking about uh, being close to, closer to Caribbeans and having her closer to both islands, Jamaica and Bahamas. She was thinking, ain't nobody about to be out here. Right. <laughs> and you from, you born and raised in Southern California, and if you'd have lived out there, you'd have married probably a Hispanic or a Filipino, and now we're going to be on this other side. And she was like, nah, we ain't going over there. And it wasn't even like a... I'm afraid you're going to cheat. It's a, why would we put ourselves in that level of temptation? When we don't have to. When we don't have to. Yeah. That's where y'all want to get. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't in love with each other until, until you're, until you can risk offending each other. When y'all can risk offending each other, that's how you know you're truly in love. So, um, that, it's 1.30. Right on the dot, brother. That was beautiful. I love y'all. It's been real. I hope y'all. I hope y'all have a great week. Uh, who who who's on the B side this week? I'm gonna double check the cow, so I make sure I get it right. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Maji. We do need another pod with you. You're gonna have to correct me on his uh his last name, but it's William Vander Vanderblomen. Yay! Yes, William Vanderblomen is going to. Oh cheat yes, codes. cheat, cheat codes. code. Hey, cheat codes. Y'all are not ready for the cheat codes that Vanderblomen came through with this. Coming Wednesday, B side, 8 p.m. See you in the chat on Discord. And we are still working on getting chat inside the B side app. So um, I cannot wait until that's done. Hey, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. I just saw saw something. Uh right here, Jess Chavez. Please pray for my uh please pray for my daughter. God, I thank you right now for Jess's daughter. Um we don't know what the situation is, but we know that you are the God of all of our situations. I ask that you would touch her, that you would keep her mind, mm -hmm. and that you would um, bring just peace. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I love you guys so much. Um, we're about to go eat. Got a great uh, guest to be able to talk to. Uh, later on and you'll be seeing that on the b-side soon until next time people i love you so much peace press b with me and let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, yeah so press b with me and let's let whatever gon' be just be